Hi everyone, Kadri Nayeli. What? There's there's something wrong with my hair? Oh no, I just dyed it. Do you like it? I went from purple to blue to sort of green to a little blonde, but I'm back to you know whatever this is. This is the totally codable color, so I hope you enjoy it because it's not gonna last. Anyway, so you're not here for my hair, I know, but. I am going to show you a very super quick tutorial. It's actually something that a lot of people have been asking for and a lot of other people have been really confused about. I'm going to use a repeater as my example to show you how to limit characters. What is that exactly? Well, imagine you're writing a blog. You have a database collection and you have a title and you have a description for the blog. But that's all you have, a title and a description. You don't have a, a subtitle. You don't have a, a mini description. You just have a title and a description. And maybe you have an index page where you have a repeater and you're showing a little piece of that blog so that people can read the title, read a little bit of the description, click on it, and then be redirected to the dynamic page where they can read the entire blog. Now I'm saying blog because that's just the first example that came to mind, but you can really use it for anything else. And you can use it on other things, other texts that are not in repeaters. So let's get started. How do I share my screen? Hmm. All right, so here we are in the editor. I had a lot of requests, uh, people asking me to start from scratch. So because this is such a short tutorial, it's very easy, sort of a one, two, three kind of step. I'm going to go ahead and start from scratch. I'm in a blank page. So go ahead and visit your editor. Make sure your code developer tools are on. Then you're going to hit this little plus sign and we're going to look for a repeater. You will find that under lists and grids. If you don't see list and grids, then you probably forgot to turn on your developer tools. So go to code at the very top and turn on those tools. Once you're under lists and grids, choose whichever one you want. I'm going to choose the top one. I'm assuming that you already have a database collection prepared. If you don't, go ahead and do that now. Pause the video, put the video on a to watch later <laughs> folder on YouTube, uh, and then come back here after you've created your database collection. Let me show you what mine looks like. Over here on the left hand side, you'll see the start site, site structure. There we go, site structure. If you don't see it, go all the way down to the bottom of the screen and you'll see a little arrow. Click on that so that way you can open and close the site structure panel. Under the site structure, go all the way down until you see the word database. These are all your collections that you have created. Mine is labeled blog, of course, because of the example that I was explaining earlier. And I have pre-filled it with uh, bits of information. I have one empty line, so I'm going to delete that because if I don't, it'll be a blank space inside of my repeater, which I don't want. I only have three columns. You can have many, many more. My columns have a title, which of course is just a regular text field, and it's just the title of the post. Then I have another one called description. This will be the body of the blog that I'm going to be creating. And it is also a text field. And the field key is description because that is what I labeled it up here. And then my third and final column is an image. I decided to add a random picture. And this is not a text field. Make sure that you set it as an image field so that way you can actually save the image in your database collection. Once you have your database collection prepared, now we can start connecting the repeater. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign one more time. I'm gonna look for the word database. From database, I need to look for the data set. Add one to the page so that way you can connect this repeater to that database collection that you prepared. I'm gonna click on manage data set, select the collection that I want to connect it to, and I'm going to make sure it says read only because I'm only displaying information. So read only is fine. I'm going to leave it at 20. 
Um, I don't have more than 20 items, I only have three. All right, so I already configured my data set. I'm gonna click on that repeater. I'm gonna click on the little icon that says connect to data. Select my only data set on the page. Once that is connected, I can start connecting these little pieces. Well, here's where I'm going to connect my title. So I will keep this text element. I'm gonna delete this little box, move this a little bit more up here. This will be my description. And I will change this button to read, or to say, read more. Okay, so let's connect my image. I'm gonna click on that same connect to data. The image source will be the only image column that I have in my database collection. The alt text, well, I didn't prepare that, but I'll go ahead and choose the title for that. And then I have the title here. I'm gonna make sure that I make it wide enough because I don't want it wrapping around too quickly. I will connect that to the title. The next one I will connect to my description. The reason I'm connecting it to the description is because I want to show you what it looks like before we code it. We are not going to leave it like this. We're going to remove the connection because we are going to manually tell the text three here uh, what it's going to read. And then the button, well, I haven't created a dynamic page, but you would connect it to a dynamic page from there. Let's go ahead and hit preview to see what this looks like. All right, now that I hit preview, you see this beautiful repeater that has a whole bunch of information. It has an image, it has a title, and it has a description. But notice how all of the descriptions are different sizes. That looks really odd. I really don't wanna show off my blog index in this way. So I'm going to add a little bit of code to change all of these words. I don't want to delete or remove my information. I've already typed it in there. It's already in my database collection. All I want to do is make this look a little bit nicer, neater, and kind of like a, a teaser to show a little bit of the description that is waiting for them to read in my blog. So let's go back to the editor. First thing we're going to do is disconnect this little text. So go back here, click on that little green icon, and select Choose from the drop-down menu. This breaks the connection that we originally created. While this text element is still selected, go ahead and right-click in case you don't see the Properties panel already. Once you right-click, you're going to see this little word, View Properties. If you click on that, this properties box or properties panel will pop up and we're going to use it to change the label of text three. Mine is called text three. Yours could be something else. It may be pizza, hamburger, whatever. <laughs> so this is where I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it to something simple and I'm going to call it description. That description, that's all I got. And then you can continue further and label, relabel all the others. For example, text one, I'm going to change it to title. You don't have to because you know, it's already connected, but you can. So then now that we already have description relabeled, notice how the hashtag name on this side or the element ID changed on your page as well. So now it's hashtag description. It is no longer hashtag text three. Now that we've relabeled it, we'll be able to identify it a lot faster and easier in the code. To get the code, you are going to visit support.totallycodable.com. And then you're gonna search for this tutorial article. That's where you're gonna copy and paste the code. Once you get that code, you're gonna open up the code panel at the bottom and you're gonna paste it here. This is gonna be the exact same code. You don't have to squint your eyes or try to supersize your screen. I promise it's the same code. Just copy and paste it here and that way you can start manipulating the code with me. The very first thing that we're gonna do is make sure that our data set name is correct. So here it's hashtag dataset one. 
Well, we only have one data set on the page and by default, Wix always labels it hashtag data set one. So yes, it matches. And then on the fourth line of my code, I have repeater one. There's no underline, so that probably means that my repeater is also called repeater one. Again, by default, Wix labels it hashtag repeater one. So we're already set. Then I have two variables in the following lines. One is called long title and the other one is called short title. So what my code is saying is that on ready, when the data set one is ready, I want to go to the repeater one. And when the item is ready, I want to get the long title, which is item data dot title. Dot title is the name of my field key from the column in my database collection because I grabbed the title. Remember I clicked on the little three dots and then I showed you the field key. That is where I got this from. So if yours is called first name, then you change that here in the code. But mine is called title. Then I created another variable cart called short title. So in short title, I took the long title, which is over here. I added a dot substring, which is S U B S T R. And then in open close parentheses, I put a zero comma 40. 40 represents the number of characters that I want to limit it to. Now in this code, I'm doing the title, but I'm going to change it. I want to do the description. So instead of dot title, I'm going to do dot description. That is the name of my field key under my description column. And then I'm going to change my variable to short description. I'm going to change the first variable to the item. So the item here, the item dot substring will be zero comma 40. Let's change that to 15. And then I'm going to, after I, grab that value and I tell it how many characters to be limited to, I'm going to set that and place it inside of my text element. So on line number seven, my text element is called description. So it's dollar sign item hashtag description and it's the dot text because we're setting the text to be a specific thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this short description here. So I'm going to change my variable short description. I'm going to add a plus sign because I want to add a space. I want to add a space and three dots after it with another space. So anything that I add after that plus sign needs to be in parentheses, in quotation marks. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know what parentheses are. <laughs> in quotation marks. So that way it basically adds it to or combines it, merges it, whatever word you want to use, uh, to the short description that I had before. So let's see if that worked. Fingers crossed. I hope it did, because if not, <laughs> I have a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> There you go. I hit preview and now you only see 14 characters. So you have the title and then the part of the description, which is should only be 15 characters long. Um, so in the first one, it says where to find code articles. First, you would dot dot dot. <laughs> so then it gets, you know, people excited and, and, and they want to find out, well, what what is it? How do I find the articles? Well, you're going to have to read more. So click on the button and then be redirected to the dynamic page of that post. That was it. We just shortened that. You want to change it again? OK, let's not do 15. Let's do something else. Back to the editor. Open up the page code. Let's change it to 25. Hit preview. Yep, it added some more words, of course. Um, it breaks the word in the middle of the word because it's just counting characters. It's not counting words. So in the first one, it says, first you would visit sup, sup, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. You get the idea. So that was pretty easy, right? I know. I kind of feel bad. I kind of feel like I should have given you more. 
Oh, speaking of more, let's do that button. Okay, let's go back to the button. Let's add a load more button. This is just a bonus for you. Nothing to do with this YouTube video. Probably the people that do need it won't be able to find it, right? So I'm gonna go to add. So click on that little plus sign and we're going to add a button, any button. We'll put it down here at the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to simply click on connect to data. And then the action will be load more. Let's test it out, but first, I have no more to show, so let me duplicate these. All I did was highlight, right click, highlight, right click. So now I have more to show. And then I'm going to go to my data set and I'm gonna limit this to three. That way only three items show up when I hit preview. And then as soon as I hit my load more button, which I forgot to label, Three more items come out, and three more items come out, and three more. Well, nope, I had no more. <laughs> That's all I have. That's how that works. Super simple, too, right? Let me see. Can I do three in one video? No. <laughs> That's all I got for you. So, anyway, uh, the most um, popular question that I've been asked this entire week on the YouTube comments is How do I get in contact with you, Nayeli? Well, you can visit my website, go to mycodequeen.com, click on contact or click on online request and submit your request. And I will be more than happy to uh, read your request and get back to you as soon as possible. You can also visit totallycodable.com. Remember that you can find many coders, not just me. Many, many coders are available for you. Uh, many people in your time zone, many people that speak your language. Uh, they offer different services. They also help. Uh, they also provide private tutoring or they do design work or code work. And you're welcome to reach out to one of them. Let them know that you found them on totallycodable.com. If you have questions, you can visit the Totally Codable Facebook group to find your answers. Okay, now I'm done. I will see you soon. Bye.